Okay, so we just um, went over like what are conjunctions based on what you said? And we kind of talked a little bit about why or why you don't use conjunctions. So I just wanted to review again, what is the purpose of conjunctions? So it's pretty much everything that y'all just said. So we use conjunctions to combine our thoughts. And a lot of you said it was to use that exact word. You said combine or to bring together or to add on. And it's we do this to make more complex sentences. So what I mean by that is, for example, I could say, I am tired. That's a simple sentence, right? There's not much to it. I am tired. It tells me one thing, I'm tired. It doesn't tell me why I'm tired. It doesn't tell me how I became tired. It doesn't tell me what is the result of me being tired. It just says one thing. It's not that it's a bad sentence, it's just really simple. But, that's a conjunction. But if we use a conjunction, like some of those ones that we saw in the previous slides um, here, like once or when or if, whatever else it might be, if I use a conjunction, I could say, although I am tired, I have a lot of work I need to do, so I'll work through it. I used two conjunctions there, and I used these conjunctions for specific reasons, right? Every word we use because it, it tells us something, and conjunctions are the same. I use the word although because it's going to signal that I'm going to say something that is kind of the opposite of it, or it's going to be like a kind of like a even though or but it's very a very similar word. So although I'm tired, I have a lot of work I need to do, so I can't go to bed. So or so I can't go to bed, so I'll work through it, right? So I'm using to kind of say like I'm conceding, I'm saying so I'll do this instead. It's kind of like this this thing that's coming after it. So this is a more complex sentence. It's telling me I am tired, but even though I'm tired, I have a lot of work that I need to do, so I'm going to keep doing it. That tells me so much more about like the fact that I have something else I need to do or that um, like what is my motivation? What else am I going to keep doing to work through this? It tells me more about who I am and what kind of learner I am. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to practice using some cause and effect and then conceding and conditional conjunctions. And I'll explain what that means in a second. Um, but we're going to do the first one. I'm going to show you how I would do it. And then we're going to do the second one together, actually. Okay, so I'm going to hop over to my... Google slide so I can write this and show you how I'm going to do it. So I'm, I'm modeling. I'm basically showing you like, kind of like when we think of a model, right? Like, like a person we think of, that's the person who's showing you what this could look like on you or how you do it. That's what I'm showing you. I'm modeling how I would do this if I was a student. And I'm also going to talk through what I'm thinking as I'm doing it. I know it might seem kind of weird, but it's good to, to verbalize or to say out loud or even in your head kind of the process that you're thinking of so it becomes more clear. So the next time you do it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. I did this. So I'm going to hop over here. So we're doing this first without thinking about what we've just learned, nothing related to the Haitian Revolution. So we're going to just do it based on something that's totally unrelated. So a conjunction that I have here. So right now we're, we're not practicing using conjunctions on our own. We're practicing thinking about what these conjunctions mean. So we're going to start with cause and effect conjunctions. And um, can somebody in the chat tell me what, what do I mean by cause and effect? Looking through the chat. Yeah, so something that happens first and then what is the result of that? Amazing, absolutely. So I'm going to finish this. I say before the pandemic. So I see the word before, and I know I'm talking about something that was going on earlier in time. It's the cause part of this. So before the pandemic, oh man, man, I did a lot of things. Um, I used to travel a lot. I traveled all the time. So I am talking about what I did before the pandemic. I'm talking about something that was happening before this. So now that that, that, well, can't talk. Now that the pandemic has happened, now I'm going to think about after the pandemic. So after the pandemic, 
So what has this led to? Because I can't travel now. After the pandemic, I don't travel as much. So I don't get to meet as many new people. Notice that I, I made this even more complex by adding an additional, um, an additional conjunction there. I said, after the pandemic, I don't travel as much, so I don't get to meet as many new people. That's one of the things I love about traveling. So I wanted to add that into my sentence and say, like, not just so simply like, I used to travel, now I don't travel. I'm saying, I used to travel, but because this whole pandemic has happened, I'm not traveling as much. And that has really affected me because I love being able to meet new people and experience new things. So if this was like a paragraph, I would probably like, I would use these words in there. And I'd maybe be starting it by saying like, COVID happened in 2020 and it became a global pandemic and the world began to shut down. Um, my life has changed a lot during the pandemic. So maybe I'm going to write a cause and effect like paragraph. Say so before the pandemic, I used to travel a lot. And I maybe talk about the places I used to travel and the things I used to love about traveling. Then I would explain like, but the pandemic happened. And these are some of the ways it's affected me. I don't get to travel as much. So I don't get to meet as many new, many new people. And I could talk about why that, that affects me and why that makes me so sad. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do this one to Together. So I am going to ask y'all to help me. So it says, even though the pandemic has been difficult. Okay. So we already, we used all though earlier, and even though is similar. So does anybody want to either unmute themselves or in the chat say, what would you write to finish this sentence? And I'll be looking and waiting if anybody wants to speak. Ooh, I love that. So I see in the chat, somebody said, we learned a lot of lessons. Okay, ooh. Um, whoever said that in the chat, can you explain why? Why that was what you added at the end of this? I know it takes a little bit of time to write, so I'll give you that, give you that time. Oh my God, can you guys hear my dogs in the background? <laughs> scratching at their food bowl. Yes. Okay. So I'm seeing in the chat, you're saying that I use this because it says that even though this has been bad, there have been some good parts to it. So that is exactly right. And if I was verbalizing this, I would say like, I used even though here to show something different. I'm kind of, con I'm conceding. I'm saying that there's something on the opposite side of this, even though usually you're going to say something opposite. Like, again, even though I'm hungry, I can wait. Like, you know, so absolutely. So even though the pandemic has been difficult, we learned a lot of lessons. Love that. So if we wanted to think about this on the opposite side, now we're going to use this conditional. So like if then something else comes out of that. So can somebody else different from who already said this one, um, can somebody else explain either in the chat or out loud, what would you add on to this one? Yes, oh my God, that's amazing. We may not have learned those lessons. That is so accurate. Oh my gosh, I love that. So why did you use that statement there when using this conjunction, if? Yeah, yep. So I absolutely, I think that if we use if to kind of say like, if this, then that. It's kind of like we give into this other kind of condition that happens on the other side of it. So this would be also a really cool paragraph. Um, this could literally be a topic sentence here. Even though the pandemic has been difficult, we learned a lot of lessons. And maybe you say, such as X, Y, and Z, and that sets up like three different paragraphs. And then you could even add in like at some point, like maybe it's in the conclusion or maybe it's um, like in your body paragraphs, but you'd be talking about like 
although like this pandemic has been difficult as shown throughout these different paragraphs like or shown by the evidence in this if we didn't learn these lessons we may not have been able to advance as a society or whatever else you might want to say um but that is incredible all right really nice job with this so we just spent some time going through how we would be using these conjunctions and I gave you the examples, right? Or I gave you the conjunctions and then we added on, but we really had to think about what am I going to write based on what conjunction is there? And that's how we should be thinking when we're writing on our own. We aren't just using words like just randomly. There is a reason, there's purpose behind every word. So we are going to practice doing this um, on our own and then we're going to apply it to the Haitian revolution.